Hello. In this Java tutorial, we are going to learn about two things. The first is how to cast a primitive value, and the second is overflow. If you are looking for information on how to cast an object type in Java, please click on the link in the upper right hand corner of this screen. Some important facts to know. First, casting primitive data types allows us to convert a piece of data from one primitive type to another. Widening means converting to a data type with either more precision, as in more decimal places, or more space, as in larger or smaller values. Narrowing means converting to a data type with either less precision or less space. For AP Computer Science A, you only need to know about the three primitive types, int, double, and boolean, but we will be covering some of the others in this lecture. Let's start by looking at some code. So here we have our code. Here we have the data on the stack memory, and here we have some notes. We'll start by declaring a variable, a, of type double, and initializing it to be 3.0. Then we'll add it on the stack here. Next, we'll notice that here we're setting double b equal to 4. The 4 is an int, and the b is a double. This is what we call widening, because 4 needs to be widened to 4.0, adding precision. This can happen automatically, so then when we place it on the stack, it automatically converts it to 4.0. Now let's look at another example. Here we have double C equals double 5. The double here is manually casting it to a double. This is a good practice because it lets other programmers know what's going on, but it's not required in the case of widening. Here, we're declaring a variable d and setting it equal to c. This will cause an error when we compile because c needs to be narrowed to fit into an int value. Narrowing must be done manually. For example, if we said int d equals and we manually cast it as an int c, this would work. Then we would narrow the value 5.0 into the int value 5. Next, let's look at this example. We have int e, and we're casting 3.95 as an int. It's important to understand when we cast a double as an int, we lose the entire decimal portion of the number. So we don't round, we truncate after the decimal point. Therefore, e will be set equal to the int 3. Next, let's look at an example where we have to deal with overflow. Here we have int x equals 10. We'll place that on the stack. It's important to know that ints go to a value from about negative 2 billion up into a value of about positive 2 billion. Here we're declaring a variable of the primitive type byte y. We haven't initialized it yet. Bytes can have a minimum value of negative 128 and a maximum value of 127. On this line of code, we are setting the byte y variable equal to x. This is going to generate an error, because we need to narrow x. In this case, the value of x10 is well within the range of what a byte can hold. However, the compiler is going to be concerned that x may not always be within the range we want. Therefore, we need to manually cast the int x as a byte, and then we can set y equal to it. In this case, y equals 10. There's no need for any loss of data. In this example, we're casting the number 128 as a byte. We can see positive 128 is greater than the maximum value a byte can hold. This will cause an overflow, where this number is larger than our data type can hold. In the case of byte, that means it'll roll over to the minimum value. The minimum value will be negative 128. Other data types can roll over too when they overflow. Byte, short, int, and long will all overflow and wrap around to the other side. The primitive type double and float will not wrap around when they overflow. Instead, they will go to infinity if the value is too high or negative infinity if the value is too low. Casting is one example of when we can have an overflow. However, we can also overflow a variable when we add past its highest value or subtract past its lowest value. To see the next video in this curriculum, 
please click on the link in the lower left hand corner of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the link in the lower right hand corner of the screen.